Uh, no, uh, because uh, <laughs> I have, I guess, not for a long time, not for a long Yeah, we, we, we have, well, that's true, even in Air Force in the early days, we would once in a while come up with a real, a real clunker. And uh, uh, John Morgan had written a piece that was involving a lot of ethnic dancing I think for a radio show. I mean, it's just ludicrous. But he wanted the audience there to understand, so he made us put on these paper hats. <laughs> And uh, for the Dutch dance, we were to wear these, and it was just nothing, 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 nothing. No, no response right through from the game. So now, when we get into a difficult situation, someone will say, "Get the Dutch hats." <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I can remember doing a, a blackout and a, a live television show in Montreal with a bunch of actors, all in the period costume. A lot of work for a blackout, but you know, a blackout is something which lasts about a minute at the most. And we got to the punchline, the dead silence, and we're supposed to hold it, you know, while the camera's still on us, so I was, we stood there. <laughs> Finally, the red light went off, and then I walked forward and made a little speech, and I said, well, normally uh, at the end of a sketch like this, because the audience was sitting there in silence, hundreds of them. I said, normally at the end of a, a piece like that, there there is a punchline, and it, it's got such a, a surprise element in it that the whole audience breaks up with laughter, and then we capture that on a uh, moment on the camera and the sound, and and then we have a, a viable uh, piece of material. However, I said on this occasion, I just was going on and on like this, and normally, <laughs> and all the actors were in hysterics because I was uh, doing an academic explanation of uh, what a blackout is. And I couldn't think of anything else to do. I mean, it was absolutely, we were mortified. You just can't walk away and pretend it didn't happen. So I went out with this great long explanation, and then the audience started to laugh, and everything was saved. Not really, just one last question for the vocational question. How did it feel to be at the Ed Sullivan show? Or this must have been the well, it was it was fine, but it, it could have been an awful lot better. He he, uh, yeah. I came there at noon. He told me to be there at noon, and he was tied up right up until now. This is a live show going at eight o'clock. He didn't talk to me until seven o'clock, and at seven fifteen, he took me up to his office and started to rewrite my act, edit my material. He said, "Well, you can't say that. We've got troops in Korea. You can't say this. You can't say that." No, 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 I'll go back to what you did in, 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 in Toronto at the CNE Grandstand Show. And I said, I, well, I was talking about Canadian politicians. He said, well, it's the same here. Oh, boy. So I just had to do the best I could at the last minute. It was a real panic situation. Because he was insistent. And he insisted on the timing and, and the edit. Wow, to walk on stage in front of millions of people with all that tumbling around in your head trying to figure out where the hell you are, it's so unfair, you know, so unfair. Uh, he's dead now. Um, I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not going to do the Ed Sullivan show again, but if I ever do anything like that, I never allow those things to happen. Never. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. May the forest be with you. Mm -hmm.